I'm Johnny Buchanan, and in this video, what we're going to do is to find an interesting solution to a really common problem. Before I tell you what the problem is, in fact, maybe you can spot it. I'm going to just play this track. Okay, so I've got this quite vibey track, but my word, there are a lot of drums. What I've done is to do what we all do, which is to find loads of things that seem vibey and interesting, and I've thrown them all into the sort of pot of this production in one go. And as a result, what we've got is loads of things kind of doing the same job as other things. And in production, it's really easy to do without wanting to sound like an old man. Once upon a time when computers just couldn't do the amount of processing they can do now, what we had to do was to be really careful about what we put into records because there simply weren't enough tracks for us to be able to have everything at once. What we can do now, of course, is to add all the loops we like in order to kind of build tracks. And that's fine until we kind of get to a point where we've got this level of sort of oversaturation. Okay, so how to sort this out? Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to mute the bass and the synth parts and we're just going to concentrate on the drums. Now, really what I want to do is I do want to use all three of these loops. It's just that I want each one to have a defined role rather than simply just to play back. Now, I said at the beginning of the video, we we're going to find an interesting way to try and sort these things out. And we are. The way that we're going to do it is through a particular type of step gating using the step effects. But before we start applying those, let's listen to these beats and work out what we want each one to sort of do. So here's the main one. Okay, so sort of solid kind of disco groove, I suppose. Here's the next one. Okay, so we've got an even sort of more simple beat with this long snare at the end of bar four and um, uh, a kind of more, slightly more rounded kick. Let's have a listen to this one. Okay, so this is what um, Logic refers to frequently as a kind of topper loop, which effectively is lots of top end detail and much less at the bottom. But that's actually quite an interesting place to start because all three of these loops actually does contain some kick drum. They're all playing at the beginning of bar one. Now this top loop is the one with the least strong kick drum, as you would expect. But one thing that happens when we start conflating lots of um, loops like this is that we tend to get lots of things contributing to the kick and to the snare and to the hats. And that's one thing we're going to keep in mind as we go through and try and work out what we want each of these grooves to be. Now, effectively, what I want to do is to use this first loop as my main loop, but I definitely want it to feel shorter and spikier and more urgent than it does right now. So as I mentioned, the way that we're going to do this as we're going to use from the multi effects options step effects. And when I bring this in, effectively what I get to see is this modular effect that uh, Logic has. It contains uh, literally a mod effects section where I'm in a position to produce flanging, phasing kinds of effects. I've got a delay, I've got reverb, I've got a master output, I've got a filter section, distortion, all kinds of things. Now we're only going to be using this for one particular type of processing, at least to begin with. And this is the idea of gating, which is down here. Now what I've effectively got, just before I do actually turn this filter on and move down to the gate, just to show you how step effects works. Effectively what I've got is all of these steps which I can then apply to different parameters. At the moment I'm looking at the filter modulator. So effectively if you imagine all of these steps which are currently set to 16th notes can effectively produce an individual offset to the filter. In other words this first step is bright which means that the filter will open right up. The next one's a bit less bright so effectively it will step down to become a bit less bright. And exactly that kind of processing can be applied to different parameters. And the way that I want to apply it, I'm going to turn the filter off and in fact I'm going to turn off that lane of step sequencing, is to apply it to this gate. Now gating, as we know, is all about volume. If a gate is open, we can hear the sound. If it's shut, we can't hear the sound. So effectively, if I gate this signal, what I have a chance to do is to kind of chop it up into blocks. Well, how long do I want each block to be is my first question. Well, the groove is 
mostly kind of in 16th note, so I'm going to stick with a 16th note for now. And then the important um, sort of parameter next to it, in fact there are a few here, is depth. Depth allows me to control how much each block will affect the volume. So again, in other words, if I want full depth on a particular step, I need its step to be at maximum. If I want the next one to be quieter, then what I have a chance to do is to individually go through and create offsets. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by just creating a sort of eighth note pattern or an eight step pattern, I should say, where effectively we've got a bias on the downbeats and the ones in between. But effectively what we're doing is we're creating a pattern that is just a little bit um, sort of broken up in this way. And what I can do is to move the end point back so I'm only working with eight steps, which is what I want. Okay, now this is where the, the really important part happens, which is that effectively, if you think about each of these steps as being a volume block, what I can do is to shape how that volume block behaves. And I can do that over here on the left hand side. So effectively, in the context of one sixteenth note, each of these blocks is currently a little volume ramp. Each sixteenth note is going, to, is going to sort of fade up and it's going to fade down. Now we won't hear it as a fade because it's a sixteenth note, it's going to sound too fast. What I want to do is to effectively make sure that the attack time is actually as sharp as it can be. But what I then do is to just create a little bit of envelope shaping here, which allows me to turn each of these individual slices into something much more percussive. Yes, we're going to hear the initial transient, but then the volume of each of those 16th notes is then going to drop away and just be a bit more curved and a bit more precise. And the module I forgot to mention was reverb, which is here. Let's turn that off. Okay, so now you can see that effectively what I've got is what we sort of sometimes refer to as kind of transient shaping or envelope shaping of every single step. I've got this much spikier beat. Now you might be thinking, well, that's a bit extreme compared to the original groove. We've lost loads of the sort of feel and power of that. Okay, well, if I decide that I agree that that is something we need to try and do something about, well, I could back the depth dial down. Now what this is effectively going to do is to allow me to almost treat this envelope shaping as a parallel process. It's going to mostly apply itself to the sound, but not completely. I've taken this down to 75%, which means that now effectively 25% of what we're going to hear is going to be the original groove, and three quarters of it is going to be this kind of envelope shaped version. So what this allows me to do is to find the point where I'm getting the kind of punch that I've got from this gate mix at the same time as not completely destroying the spirit of the original groove, bearing in mind I kind of want this to be the main groove within my project. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in the second groove. Now I'm going to solo this so we can hear it by itself for a moment, but what I'm also going to do is just to copy this step effect across in the mixer. Now what this allows me to do straight away is to have exactly the same settings available on this second loop. I'm actually going to bypass it for a moment just to remind myself what this second loop sounds like and then to kind of appraise it and work out what I want this one to be. Okay, so having done that, what I actually want to do now is to think, okay, well, I've kind of got the kick from the first loop being my main kick. What I want to do here with this gate sequence is to slightly de-emphasize the kick of this particular um, loop and instead kind of stress the second half of each um, uh, part of the beat loop or place a bit more accent on the snare drum when it comes because it's a slightly fuller, bigger, richer sound. So again for a moment what I'm going to do is to take depth up to 100%, so whatever I do here I'm hearing completely, and then what I'm going to do is to use the gate mix as a means to just sort of almost mix the shape of this. If these are 16th notes it stands to reason that if I turn the volume down on step one I'm going to lose the volume of the kick, a lot, almost completely in fact. 
What I can then do is just sort of fade up a little bit, I guess, to beat two, which is going to be here. And then what I might do is to stay nice and uh, sort of loud there and then back away towards the end of that second beat. Remember, these are all 16th notes. So effectively, what I've done is to make sure that I'm at maximum volume for the fifth 16th note, which is beat two of the, of the groove. Okay, so obviously when we AB that by unbypassing the effect, we get to hear that really extremely. Now, this feels too spiky to me. I like the idea of what I've done here, but it definitely feels too spiky. So we already know that what I can do is to back down the depth control so that I get some of the original groove, and that's one thing that I could do. But the other thing I can do is obviously change the shape of this particular um, envelope. Remember, each of these steps is a 16th note. So effectively what I can do is to sort of effectively here choose the shape of how I want the volume of each 16th note to behave. And that's working nicely. We're getting all of that kind of extra shape that we're um, sort of experiencing now uh, within um, that uh, longer sort of um, feel to each of these individual steps. What I'm going to do is actually just keep the volume a little bit higher in this sort of second beat. Remember, yes, these are 16th notes, but I'm kind of thinking these of these as two separate beats within my pattern. And of course, if I want to, what I could do would be to say, well, I'd quite like to have a unique sort of character to more than just eight steps. You can see that I can extend this out as far as I like. What I'm going to do is to sort of copy the same sort of shape here coming in through uh, my third 16th note. I'm going to keep the volume completely at maximum all the way through um, effectively what is now beat four. Remember, there are 16 steps. So beat four is going to be step 13 of a 16 step sequence. And the advantage of that is that that little sort of fill that happens right at the end now gets to play at full volume. Let's put the two grooves in together. And what I'm going to do is to start with them both uh, bypassed and then we'll punch them both in. Okay, and what we're going to do now is to hear exactly the same thing in the mix. So what I'll do after four bars is to punch in those two effects. This is how it sounds, how it sounded when we first pressed play at the beginning of the video, and, how, and uh, for the second half, we'll put in those two gate uh, sequences. Let's put the synths in too. So that's really interesting. It completely repurposes the drums in the context of the track. Now, one thing to say, actually, it'd be really nice if there was a way for me to move, not just from bypassing so that these effects are sort of on or off in this kind of very stepped way, but then maybe I can make this change dynamic through the track. And of course, I can do exactly that. If I was to automate the depth control so that I effectively went from zero up to whatever percentage above that, suddenly this opportunity to make this kind of gating dynamic becomes part of the mix. I could decide in the chorus that I want everything to feel a bit fuller and a bit richer. Well, I could um, sort of back down the depth so that more of the original groove comes through. And there's just one last thing to say. I mentioned right at the beginning of the video that there's a little ghost of a kick drum in this top loop as well. And I don't want there to be. I'm getting enough kick from 
some uh, other patterns. And effectively, the reason why I'm uh, sort of tagging this onto this video is because, as I said at the start, we are really good at just finding lots of beats that we want to use at once and throwing the kitchen sink into productions like this. And going through and appraising the qualities of each one in turn is really important. So the last thing I'm going to do is to put a channel EQ on this sound. I'm going to engage the uh, high pass filter or the low cut. And I'm just going to scoop that out so that effectively the kick drum is removed from this pattern altogether. So I'm not going to use gate sequencing for that last part. I'm going to use a sort of low end filter to just scoop it out instead. So within this video, we've used the step effects to produce a kind of gate sequencing of beat loops particularly when we've got lots of individual components contributing to the drums within a project, it's really easy for things to become bloated and overblown. And this is an interesting way to go through and carve some space into your productions.